Welcome back to another Phil episode. Just got back from a Costco trip. Usually just go Costco just to buy toilet paper, laundry detergent, just stuff I can buy in bulk. Sometimes it's just fun like roaming the aisles, but ended up coming back with a whole pizza and anyone who has ever been to Costco know that their pizzas are like massive, like super sized, like real super sized. Like look at this, no joke. I couldn't fit the whole box on the table. This is the size of one slice. It's the size of my, my face. Bought that. I, had, I bought three hot dogs. I had two when I was there. And now it just looks like sad. It looks like cold. It looks, this doesn't resemble a hot dog in any form. It looks kind of gnarly. But hey, beggars can't be choosers. Ended up buying a, what is this? A jacket potato. A jacket potato with tuna cheese and beans. I thought I'd give that a go. But it's massive, man. Look at this. Portion sizes are crazy. And finally, some donut bites. Pack of 30, which kind of ate half of it already. And they're quite decent. They're honestly quite decent. And of course, your bottomless, bottomless soda. But I don't really like this all the time. I just thought, since I have everything sap, <sighs> film a podcast. And yeah, just talk about what's happened in my recent events. I mean, it was Valentine's Day has just passed. It was my anniversary like a month ago. Yeah, it was my anniversary like a month ago. I went to a Korean barbecue. And... Mmm... I feel like I could hear myself chewing like the echo. Mm. So the problem with having a moustache is when it's not done, you end up sometimes there's times you're eating and you end up chewing on your own moustache and it's kind of disgusting. Even now it's like the size of this pizza, it literally wraps around my whole face. It's like a it's like, it's like a blanket. It's like a washing that rag. A towel. Let me have a bite of this hot dog. Mm. Ooh, that hot dog is salty. Sorry to anyone listening on Spotify or Apple. Just audio only. Now I have hot dog bread stuck on my teeth. Maybe there's a reason why no one eats on podcasts. But as I was saying, it's my anniversary last month. We went to Korean barbecue. And honestly, I think I mistook beef for pork. And I was eating pork medium rare. It was like shirt haram. I think I left that place with like food poisoning. I mean, you can't eat pork medium rare. But... It didn't live up to our expectations, even though it was like, we ordered tons of food. I had like a couple of chicken breasts. I ordered five plates of uh, pork belly and the waitress kept coming back and forth, back and forth with just another plate. And at this point, it's pretty much me, me eating because my wife is like, she can't eat no more. Bear in mind, us, we sat there for like two and a half hours just cooking, grilling. Cooking alone on Korean barbecue takes a long time. So you're sitting there salivating, waiting for your food to cook. I was not patient, hence why I had pork medium well or medium rare. I won't, I won't do that again. But overall, I don't think it was worth it. Like we didn't, we had a great time, of course, like having soju, beers, that's always nice. But I don't think it was authentic. Like it wasn't run by Koreans. So that was like the first red flag. And then, yeah, it was a great atmosphere, but you're going for the overall food, especially like you're sitting there for a while, you're eating. Honestly, it just wasn't that great. Wasn't that great. We ended up leaving and I'm getting like a bubble tea. Like there's a bubble tea place everywhere now in London. It's like every, every other corner you turn around, bubble tea, bubble tea, everyone's starting a bubble tea. You know, it's kind of funny. I always like just the classic, like uh, the, just the traditional, traditional black tea. And 
Yeah, milk and tapioca. Can't go wrong with that. Let me have another bite. Ooh, just got on my top. Mmm. This hot dog is just sad. It's like solidified. And the sausage is almost like a frankfurter. It's one of those where it's just boiled and submerged in water. And the bread has kind of stuck and molded around the sausage, sausage itself, glued with the mustard and ketchup I put on earlier. Mmm. It still tastes the same. But definitely not as good. Okay, let me try this. What is this called? It is a... Fuck, what is this called? It's a... Oh, baked potato. With tuna and cheese. Man, they did all hold back. That's the one thing you can count on Costco, man. Literally, the portion sizes are massive. Hmm. It's very good. Hmm. Like I'm not, I'm not really a big fan of tuna. There was a time when I would just eat for the calories. This was when I didn't really know what nutrition really was. I mean, says the guy who's eating all this junk. But there was a time where I would crack a can of tuna, lean over my kitchen sink and just scoop it down along with like a tub of cottage cheese. It was just disgusting. Like, is that's traumatised me for a long time. Now I don't even touch tuna. But this is very good. Like... Their tuna mayo that they put on this jacket potato, along with the beans and of course cheese, wicked. Mm. And it's a big ass potato, man. Where'd you even find potatoes like this? Like, potatoes you get in the supermarkets are fucking tiny. Okay. It's good. Where was I? Salty though, man. Those who have been to Costco, you've made it that far. You might as well go get, you reward yourself with some food, man. Having said that, like, the queue, the queue for the food alone has got to be at least 30 minutes. It's become so popular, like, it's a bargain. And... If I could, I'd order everything. We want to, I want to order like an ice cream sundae because the ice cream sundaes are banging. But they happen to sell out was in the evening. But hey, I feel like I do have enough food. I do have desserts, which I'm just not feeling right now. But where was I? Yeah, we decided to go to like Korean barbecue after watching so much like Asian dramas, like Asian reality TV shows, the stuff that like on Netflix. Like, that's all I get. Like, the algorithm that gets pumped to me based on the cookies I watch is just all Asian dramas now. And what popped up the other day was a Physical 100. And I was like, ah, this looks a bit cheesy just based on the trailer. I was like, I can't bother. Then one evening, me and my wife, we decided to give it a watch. And my goodness, it's epic. For those who haven't seen it, just give it a watch. But it's so addictive. And we're just sitting there like on the edge of the edge of our seats, like oh, okay, because we're rooting for specific people. It's amazing how they were able to bring together athletes, MMA fighters, gymnasts, wrestlers. Uh, of course, you have many bodybuilders, like CrossFitters, like they're a whole wild spectrum of people to compete against each other. But it's not necessarily about like individual tasks because right now. Um, like I think I'm halfway through and it's like now team task which is yeah completely different it just goes to show like the difference in physiques and physical performance in general for like in the first task you had people hanging from like scaffolding pretty much and that task would never favor like the heavy heavy power lifters so they'll always drop out first but 
I, I remember I think they hung for like over 15 minutes and they will wrap their arms around the bar. Super, super impressive. Like, I don't think I'll last a minute. I've, I've done it one time, just like hanging, like before you're doing a pull up. And yeah, even that was hard because I've seen around a lot of places they'll do the 100 second hang challenge. So I thought, oh, let me give that a go. And in the gym, yeah, I managed to do it, but it was hard. It took me a long time to understand that technique, but that was only 100 seconds. Like, I couldn't imagine what it would be like to try suspend myself in the air for over 15 minutes. Like, geez. Not only, like, physically, but mentally. That was just exhausting just even thinking about it. But great show, man. Like, uh, as much as I would love to go on that show just to do the task in general, I know for sure I'll get battered, like, ruined. Everyone thinks they train hard, but there's always someone that trains harder, you know? Just there's athletes or professionals that specialise in that one thing that they train all their life for, you know? You can't sit here and you can't be the best at everything. But very interesting. One of the guys on that show, he is also on another Netflix uh, romance drama called Singles, Singles Inferno. And that is also wicked too. About, I don't know how many people, like eight people trapped, trapped on this island for, I think around just over a week. And they'll just go on dates. So they'll go back and forth from living on the island and living on paradise but of course to be on paradise you have to like win the tasks so the men would face each other and uh, determine uh, who they can pick say vice versa with a woman but yeah great series super fun no bad vibes and when you compare it to like other West End reality tv shows it's like you leave feeling like kind of relaxed you know it's very chill because I think they don't promote no, like, drama. There's no arguments. So it's very easy to watch, but very addictive. But, yeah, one of the, guy, one of the guys on the show was also in Physical 100. So it's like, yeah, it's like, wherever I go, I'm always... It's like you're watching the same faces. But Singles Inferno is actually a great concept. Like, the person who figured out that concept where you would bring let's say eight ten like x amount of people onto an island and it only lasts like over a week and you can film a whole season out of a week so imagine you've done this three six five three six five days of the week you can churn out like eight, as many seasons as possible bro like 36 seasons like absolutely crazy let me have some more i'm liking this a lot crazy thing is after I eat this, I'm gonna go to the gym. Stuff is heavy. Mm. I've never really had a potato with a skin on. It's quite good. I hope they wash it though. Lately, I've been enjoying just cheese pizzas on their own. Like growing up, I'll get a piece of sort of the most toppings. But then my wife introduced me to cheese pizzas and it's just, it's just different, you know. It hits differently. And now I understand. It's like the foundations. If you can't get a cheese pizza right, every other pizza is not going to be good. I have to sanitize these mics after I'm finished. <sighs> oh my god, I can feel myself slowing down.
this one so big you have to fold it in half and then it's like the size of a regular pizza even then it's still massive one slice is like two or three slices Now that pizza's cold, it's just literally eating like bread and cheese. I think the layer of the the ratio of bread and cheese is like 50-50. It's absolutely absurd. But I'm not complaining. And to contract the calories, a Pepsi Max, you know? Do I get that sugar-free soda at me? Sometimes it's like it's nicest to drink a soda to when you especially when you're eating like fast food it, it cuts the grease like trust me i don't eat like this every time but i will have a heart attack probably have a heart attack filming this episode <laughs> like could you imagine i just pass out and no one's here to save me i gotta big up big up my asian brothers and sisters you know bringing more awareness to my people to my people out there but I think what got me started on watching like Asian TV series in general was Terrace House. Like Terrace House is Japanese and it's where a group of people would literally just live would live in a house and the difference is they'll go back their normal day to day so they'll still go to work. And there is no rush. They can leave whenever they want. Like no you can't get kicked off. It's not like Big Brother. You can leave whenever you want. And yeah, you, so some people will stay there for a couple of months. Like it's a long show, it's a long process. It's one hundred percent down to them. Like they decide how they want to date, who they take on dates. So they live in a house of like both mixture of uh, male and females, and yeah, over the course of however long they will get to know each other. But like I said earlier, like with this this genre of it's just so chill, man. It's like nice. It's chill. It's so easy to watch. And yeah, it's very, it's very addictive. And what I've noticed, it's very sad when like one person leaves. I remember watching, there was this guy, I think his name was Shohei. When he left, my goodness, he like sung a song with his band. And it was such a vibe, man. It was such a vibe to the point I literally, I think I found him on like YouTube and then Spotify. I was just banging out his music for a while. I think it's time just to open up the, the donut bites. So you get three flavours. So you get white chocolate and caramel. You get pink chocolate, which is strawberry. No, it says pink chocolate and berry. I see. And then you get chocolate hazelnut. So I already know the best flavour is the pink one. It tastes so artificially good. But they're literally little bites of heaven. There's nothing in it really. Just like these crispy things on on top of the glazing. But funny enough, we bought these, my wife didn't like them. She's like, this is not a real American donut. And I think the difference between like donuts around the world and donuts in America specifically is the donuts you get in America, when they come out of the fryer, it's almost like they're doused and they're sitting like a syrup. So the syrup soaks into the dough. Whereas like the donuts you get in like the supermarkets here, wherever, even like the cost, maybe it's the style of how the Brits like to eat it. But the donut itself is kind of just like bready. Like inside it's just like, well, it's a donut, but it's bread form. No syrup. Mm. I guess this would be my cheat meal. That was white chocolate. Didn't really taste like anything. Finally, chocolate flavour. Well, chocolate hazel. Oh, it's hazelnuts. I don't know what's on the rest. Let's do a one bite. Hmm. I can see this can turn into like a, a mukbang. Is that what it's called? So where you people just eat. I can ASMR eating. What's next? I have a few good guests coming on next week. But my previous two episodes, man, I like them a lot. Like, I've I got a great enjoyment watching them. Well, it's a shame no one put some respect on my name, you know? 
have to watch it. Alright, yeah, man. That's it. I'm out. Peace. Now I just feel so gassy. Thank <laughs> you.